There's a rather entertaining phenomenon taking place right now in politics, and it's messy, it's rough, but it's hilarious. So the context is that as we've talked a good bit about special counsel Robert Herr released his report on Joe Biden's handling of classified documents. Biden was cleared with no charges, but in this report, Robert Herr took cheap shots at Biden over his age. And it's not just me saying that this report has been widely condemned by legal experts, prosecutors, former prosecutors as seemingly politically charged, given many of these comments don't comport with normal prosecutorial behavior. My speculations that Robert Herr was afraid of being accused of going soft on Biden, even though obviously this was the justified response, no charges, but wanted to get ahead of those criticisms by including these sorts of cheap shots. Well, ever since that, the right, or ever since then, the right has been running with this story and going after Biden on these grounds. They obviously have for a long time, but now they're even louder about Biden's age and losing it anytime he has a gaffe, mixing up names or something. And in response, <laughs> some of these right wingers gaffes and glitches are getting circulated as a way of pointing out maybe it's not so unusual for you to make some mis uh, mistakes, especially in Biden's case, in a five hour deposition. And listen, we don't have to do what aboutism to explain to people why they should vote for Joe Biden. We don't even need to make these comparisons to explain why the right wingers takeaways from this report are incorrect. But since I've already done about a billion extensive discussions about Biden's age and that being a factor, sure, but also he's been the most effective president we've had in at least 50 years. So maybe he's doing something right. And maybe that should be something we talk about too, not just the one factor. And uh, so we've gone through that. We've extensively, like I said, discuss that subject by itself, okay? Which is how you do a good intellectual discussion. Talk about this, avoid those sorts of comparisons. What about this? What about that? And now let's jump into these hilarious clapbacks in the form of recirculating clips. Uh, and be ready, MAGA influencers, prominent MAGA people. Anytime you mix up a name or have a glitch of some kind, now it's going to be a viral moment because of your attacks related to Joe Biden's gaffes. And let's spend some time first on Sean Handy. The account on X, ASIN, I think it is, or ACYN, however you say that, has been doing a really good job of catching the slips and finding old ones from Sean Handy. And then Handy gets brutally mocked for them online. We'll start with this one. Better, Mr. Speaker, thank you for being with us. Here now with more reaction, former counsel to the President Kellyanne Trump, along with former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, Fox News contributor, former White House Press Secretary. Kellyanne Trump, I love her face while she's listening to that. She goes, yeah, oh, all right, well, I guess I'm Kellyanne Trump. And the next one here. Anyway, joining us now, we are joined by Congressman Matt Gates from the great state of Florida, the host of the Rubin Report, Dave Rubin. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Jason Chavis is now with us. I thought it was Matt Gates. So again, I'm not saying that this is indicative of a problem, and his reasoning, as I'll play for you in a second, is perfectly fine um, as to why he called Jason Chavis Matt Gates. But it happens. It just does. Here's his reasoning. All right. I'm not throwing anyone on my team down the stairs here, but it's called a teleprompter error. They put the wrong name in the teleprompter. Yeah. All right. Um, then I don't know if you can blame the teleprompter for this one. And this may be my favorite. He just, it's the most, I'm American and I can say these names however the I want and he tries he takes a shot at pronouncing Angela Merkel it doesn't go well of Germany when it was Angela Merkel uh, I, I just <laughs> don't know how many of these moments he can keep having when people stay in denial and so Angela Merkel Angela Merkel <laughs> now I think he was thinking of Meghan Markle with that last name maybe and then just Angela instead of Angela uh, one more time on that one. Of Germany when it was Angela Merkel. Uh, Angela Merkel from whatever that country is. <laughs> then he says that the uh, Texas Attorney General, Ken Paxton, is Governor Paxton. 
Yeah, I can't believe it. Anyway, we really appreciate your time. Thank you, Governor Paxton and Governor Noam. Thank you. Well, text Y'all set this situation up for yourself. Now you can't make mistakes because we're going to say, oh, oh, oh. It's just too easy, you know, when y'all obsess over these small little moments on the part of Joe Biden. And then here's one more from Handy, then we'll move on to Donald Trump. Anyway, here with more with the very latest House Oversight Committee Chairman, uh, James Comer is with us. Uh, good to see you, Senator. So uh, can you explain? So, of course, James Comer is not a senator. Now, I'll say again, this is not a thoughtful engagement with the conversation of Biden's age. And you can have that separately. And we have and it's important to engage with things separately like that. But it's just a a fun little jab back sort of thing. And then on Biden's age, I, I just, as I lost my mind yesterday over this on the bonus show, uh, and I may upload that as an individual segment on the channel because it turned into something to behold, my goodness. But I'm just, it's grinding my gears how you have this president who has overseen a recovery from a once in a lifetime crisis. Like we couldn't have possibly expected it's been such a strong economic recovery that we're just dominating our counterparts on the world stage in that respect and the way that he's managed international crises the way that he's accomplished things with domestic legislative priorities and led the democratic party into achieving some truly historic things and he's According to the experts, he's been the most effective president in 50 years plus. And we spend, what, 99% of the time when we're talking about him, talking about his age. Is that really even just appropriate? Not appropriate in the sense that it's offending somebody or something like that. But is that even a reasonable way to engage with such a presidency? If we're just trying to be the most fact driven, would we really, if we care about facts, truth, if we care about giving people the correct perception of a given issue, would we really spend 99% of the time talking about something they can just casually observe, which is his age and any gaffes that we think could be coming of that or whatever, when clearly he's doing something right. So... I think a lot of the media, even though it's not wrong to talk about things that people are concerned with, and people do say they're concerned with Biden's age, and it's fine to address that subject, but I think the media is doing a disservice, and a lot of us are doing a disservice, maybe even just in our personal lives with the way we engage with this subject, putting so much of an emphasis on that when it probably affects people the least. Whereas the policies he's gone through, his management of our economic situation, bringing us from a crisis and a disaster during the pandemic to a really strong place economically, bringing us from a crime spike to crime back down to pre-pandemic levels, and then all the legislation I list off on a daily basis, that impacts people's lives, holy smokes. That's what people feel day to day. That's what improves their communities and their lives and their families' well-being. And so wouldn't we, if we were just being sort of reasonable, talk about those things way more and then also mention age that happens to affect people very little, but we can talk about it, sure. But no, instead we put just this wonky emphasis and then we seem to talk about that way more than we talk about Trump as the, not as a person, we talk about him constantly, but the media doesn't do deep dives as often as they could into how he threatens democracy. Not just saying it or saying people are concerned that he may, going into it deep and thoroughly, like how he tried to block the peaceful transfer of power, all the different schemes he's now being prosecuted for, explaining to people how he could have ended democracy as he was trying to do, and then all of his plans for a second term that are just openly authoritarian. So when you have all that, this historically super effective president who is impacting people's lives in a meaningful way, a threat to democracy over here, and we're spending all the time right here talking about age, 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 age. It just seems off. So I will leave that there.
and we'll play some of Trump's <laughs> moments. This one from the Lincoln Project is a video called Trump's Not Well. We're not blind. It's time we talk about this. Trump is not well. It never said Trump's a great speaker. Never said. I've never heard it. I don't like mosquitoes. Your climb. Your climb. They call it climate. Blah, blah. I don't mind being Nelson Mandela. They want to debank you, and we're going to debank transactions. But I know paper. I know cans. And an ominous, really an, an ominous country, and you do. Applicable. I took a cognitive test. We're funding Hezbollah. And Thomas. You have a better chance of being struck by lightning than hitting a whale. We can't do anything. It would be nice to have an intelligent person be president. We would be in World War II. What? What is... And then you also have this one from The Daily Show. I know words. I have the best words. In uh, 1870... President Ulysses S. Grant, that beautiful Orion space capsule, the combat infantry bin badge our nation as a sovereign country. A lot of work has been done, a lot of renovation, if you look at some of it. Defensive missions and missiles, your devotion, prowess. Then you will gain momentum. Heroin alone, if you look at the heroin epidemic. The federal government is conducting an aggressive investigation. And to delegitimize. As bad as it is, it, it, it meant something. By an anomalous, really an anomalous. You're gonna see some statistics, statistics coming out. Americans of all walks of life rose, rose up. Assistant Secretary Girard and Surgeon General Adams. Heart, lung, and liver transplants annually. Advising lawmakers. But China's the air supply chain. chain. This Russia thing with Trump. I hope they now go and take a look at the oranges, the oranges of the uh, uh, investigation, the beginnings. And every single car out there, even the really expensive ones. And we used to have radio for Europe, like, I think radio for Europe. The Nazis, the invasion of Normandy, and the liberation of Europe. A brilliant star shone in the East, wise men traveled far. Really big beneficiaries. Whole state to be a sanctuary for Christ. So we could do it all day. It doesn't accomplish a whole lot, but it is funny. And careful what you wish for, MAGA. You want us all scrutinizing mistakes? We'll do it. We're doing it now. But uh, I think there's more important conversations to be had, as I previously mentioned. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and you can become a member at LukeBeasleyShow.com slash membership.